If you ask a group of people to name the first electric car company that comes to mind, most of them would say Tesla. At least that's according to the latest SurveyMonkey results, which say that Tesla leads the way in brand awareness at 69%. Now on the opposite side of that graph is a company called Polestar. What is Polestar? Well, they're a company associated with Volvo, and this is the Pulsar 2, their first mass market electric vehicle. And one thing I can say for sure after spending a lot of time in a Tesla and also now this Pulsar 2, brand awareness doesn't necessarily equate to a better vehicle. So what we're gonna be doing today is taking a look outside, inside, I'm gonna show you some of the features and technology of this vehicle. We're gonna try and cram a bike in the back to see how usable this fastback design is. And then last but not least, we're gonna take it out on the road to see what it's like to drive. When it comes to looks, the Pulsar 2 is a little more classically styled. I would say most people would agree that this is a good looking vehicle. Everywhere from the front to the back to the sides, the Volvo influences are pretty obvious, but that's not necessarily a bad thing here in terms of it doesn't look like a frog like the Model 3 particularly seen here in the midnight color, which is a dark blue, just a gorgeous car, especially coupled with some of the yellow accents that you get from the brakes, the seat belts, and even the Polestar badging is kind of upscale looking. Let me know what you think in the comments below of the styling of this compared to something like the Model 3. This is usually the point where I pop the hood, we talk about the engine, how much power it makes, that's all gone. Obviously here we are looking at an electric vehicle where there are some hidden motors. Now this has two motors being it's the performance model that combine for about 455 horsepower. So suffice to say that it is not slow. It also has a 78 kilowatt hour battery that is ultimately powering it. When it comes to wheels and tires, we have 20 inch wheels on this performance model wrapped in Continental Sport Contact 6 tires. These are clearly wheels that were designed with efficiency in mind to be able to get, you know, the highest amount of miles per kilowatt hour. But they also look quite good with the two-tone black and polished look. Now, behind these wheels, we have some equally important parts, Brembo brakes, a big name in the braking space, and also Olin's Dampers, another company very well known for suspension components. I'm gonna be very curious to see how this handles out on the road. When we get inside the Polestar 2, this is where this vehicle is really differentiating itself from the competition, at least specifically the Model 3, which is this is mainly meant to compete against. It starts first with the build quality. This is an overall supremely built vehicle. Everything is very solid. The materials are fairly nice and it's just in line with what you would expect from a company like Volvo, which obviously this is, you know, tightly designed with. So having that nice build quality is in huge contrast to something like a Model 3, which we all know kind of suffers in the build quality. And then additionally, you know, the design in here, while minimal, minimalist, you still have a good feature set. Specifically, what I like is you have a traditional gauge cluster. So no longer with the Tesla Model 3 do you have to look over to this giant iPad on the right to look at your speed. You can actually get it within a traditional gauge cluster. As we move to that center screen, of course, when we talk Tesla, they have really the best center screen in the segment. But that said, the Pulsar 2, I really like this layout. It's a very simple like app-based layout. Also quick to respond, once again, Google Maps native. Uh, it does have Apple CarPlay, but it is wired, not wireless. That's a bit of a bummer for a $60,000 electric vehicle in 2024. Now, some of the things that are similar uh, in terms of to the Model 3, you have to control your HVAC through the screen. Not ideal. I personally like to have physical buttons. You have to do that through the screen here, but they are fixed buttons at the bottom here. So not the end of the world. Additionally, compared to the latest Model 3 that they moved the drive modes, drive reverse to the steering wheel, you still have a traditional gear lever here, even though it is a little bit weird, but very easy to get along with. You know, it acts just like a, a traditional lever. So that's nice. 
as is of course the design in here you know you have these wood accents the Harman Kardon sound system sounds fantastic which is really important in an electric vehicle that is quite quiet there's some mixed use of material in here which just adds to the overall experience additionally these seats are very nice comfortable great design good to look at don't support you really fantastic as we'll see in the drive in terms of you know from a performance handling perspective but outside of that heated cooled of course for sixty thousand dollars you're kind of expecting a lot of these things but it does come with pretty much all the options what don't i like about this let's talk briefly about that some piano black in here smudges up gets scratched up not ideal not the end of the world another note since it's not a ground up ev you have a transmission tunnel back here takes a bit into the rear passenger occupancy at least for foot room so that's a bit of a bummer all ground up evs this is going to be a completely flat floor the back seats while i can sit behind myself with just enough knee room my head hits the ceiling so the slope of the roof line is unfortunately hindrance to somebody 6'1 like myself so if you are a little bit taller or you have taller guests their head will hit the ceiling which is a bit of a bummer the roof is all glass like you see in a lot of evs these days which is either nice or not nice depending on who you are i mean it's nice to have the airiness it is of course tinted but you can't change the opacity so what i mean by that is in terms of if you don't want the sun beating down on your head all day there's really nothing you can do outside of maybe buy some sort of screens that you put up there so overall these are a few nitpicks that i have with the vehicle in general this is a really excellent interior and i really like it so we're going to try to throw a bike in the back to see how usable that fastback is before we take it for a drive Fitting bikes in sedans is rarely easy, but I was hopeful that the fastback design of the Polestar 2 would allow for easier loading. And in many ways, yes, the larger front to back opening does make loading larger items easier. With that said, the width of the opening is still fairly narrow and required me to remove the front wheel in order to fit my road bike in. After it's all said and done, while the final outcome versus many other sedans would be the same, the Polestar 2 does score more points for ease of loading. And as always, if you like the bike test, make sure you're hitting the subscribe button below so you don't miss future content. Alrighty, Polestar 2 electric vehicle canyon drive this is after all the performance so i figured we'll do a bit of a canyon drive cover the performance aspects and then talk just about the base polestar platform it's not slow <laughs> it is not slow they have upped the power with this year they've improved the efficiency depending on what figures you look at somewhere between 450 to 470 horsepower and it feels like it they quote and i've seen testing done 3.9 seconds 0 to 60 feels every bit of that it is extremely quick and you do get that just nauseating quality that you get with all evs that instant power is something that kind of just your body is never really ready for even when you know you're going to hit the gas pedal I always have to warn my passengers, hey, like, hold on, get ready uh, before I, you know, put a boot into it. But yeah, 3.9 seconds, really on par with the Tesla dual motor, the non-performance. So this is a performance kind of more on par performance-wise in a straight line with the Tesla dual motor, regular dual motor, because they, they are about four seconds, zero to 60, and it feels every bit as quick as that. But the big difference here is not the straight line performance. Every EV is very fast in a straight line. It is the handling performance. While the steering itself is probably the biggest letdown in the performance aspect, it's pretty light. You can make it heavier, but it's just artificial. There's no feel coming through it. So that's a bit of a bummer, but everything else dynamically is fantastic. These brakes are great nice firm pedal uh easy to modulate in terms of it doesn't just give you all the braking up front and then go away from you 
So I love that about that, this, this car. And then of course the suspension, these Owens, mm, beautiful, so well balanced. I mean, way higher quality than what you're gonna get in a Tesla. So for somebody who actually values kind of performance driving characteristics, don't get me wrong, the Tesla is extremely capable. Uh, and I haven't driven the latest Highlands, admittedly. That's the, the latest Model 3. I've, I've spent a fair bit of time in the last generation one. And this is, is far and away, way better. It is slightly firm, but it's just, if you've ever been in a car with an expensive suspension, the way it soaks up bumps, even if it's firm, because we go, this thing is so fast, it just will take the bump and settle. There's no multiple body motions. There's no multiple up and downs. It just bump settle, bump settle. And it's not jarring. It's just, it's it's fantastic. I mean, these, these Owens are really, really, really fantastic. So obviously this is not a cheap car. It's somewhere from 60 to 65 grand, depending on how you you option it maybe a little more if you get every single option and we'll talk about more about that in, in a bit uh, how I would personally option this vehicle but in terms of the performance aspects the brakes the suspension you get some cool <laughs> gold seat belts which I really enjoy um, it, you know it, it has value to it it has value to it if you're into the the performance aspect now how about everything else I touched on in the interior segment I touched on the build quality I think that is another reason that this stands apart from the Tesla it it just feels better built um, you know from a noise vibration harshness they're both electric vehicles they both are pretty quiet from a road and wind noise perspective maybe the Tesla has slightly less wind noise frankly actually I do notice a little bit of wind noise on the highway but overall this is I mean, I'm splitting hairs here. This is an extremely quiet experience and it just has a solid feeling to it. I keep going back to that. And that's something um, along with, you know, body panels that line up that we, we tend to always uh, harp on with the, the Teslas. So there's that aspect. What I'd like to show too, as we get on this highway, this was a bit of a planned route and excuse me for the the light here, but I want to show the sort of self-driving aids that they have in here because that is also a big reason that you buy a Tesla, right? Is for the quote unquote autopilot, even though it's not really autopilot, but it is a sort of enhanced, uh, some form of self-driving, uh, some form of autonomous driving. This one is actually pretty good. I will say it's not quite on the level of Tesla. Tesla's in terms of specifically when it comes to curves and the smoothness is, is, is higher in a Tesla. And it's very easy to engage. What you do is you hit the uh, just cruise control regular button and then you hit the right arrow and it will engage this little icon that is a little man holding a steering wheel. And it will yell at you if you don't hold the steering wheel which is probably a good thing. Uh, you know, people should still be driving these. And we can see here when you're in a straight line, it is so good. There's a lot of auto manufacturers that have this lane centering feature, but it kind of pogos, a lot of them pogo back and forth. This one's really good. Here's where we run into issues. Some like fairly significant turns. I'm kind of having to guide the wheel a little bit. It's a little bit jerky. So not ideal. And it doesn't give me a lot of confidence, I'll put it that way. Uh, once again, when you're in a straight line, it is one of the better ones for keeping you straight and center without pogoing back and forth. So I, I do still think there is some value here. I would say it's above average, but it is not on the quality or level of Tesla, just frankly. So I think, I think that is an important aspect because people that buy electric cars, I think in large part are big into technology and these autonomous features. Going back to uh, some of the driving dynamics, now that we've covered at least the pseudo self-driving part, 
the only dynamic part I do not like about this vehicle is the seats. The seats are very comfortable and they're perfect for daily driving. Uh, but when you when I was in those canyons, I was really holding on to the steering wheel for dear life because there's really no way to brace yourself in this seat. Uh, the lateral support up here or thigh support down there just really doesn't exist. And the G's that this car can generate from an acceleration, lateral acceleration perspective are pretty immense. So that will come into play um, if you're if you're trying to carve up a canyon or something along those lines with these sort of seats. And that sort of leads me into what I would recommend in terms of if you were gonna buy a Polestar 2, which one would I get? The performance bits are great. Like I obviously really like the brakes, I really like the suspension, but for me an EV is more of a literal appliance and it's meant to just be quiet, serene, comfortable for me to get from A to B. I personally am not big into carving a canyon with an EV. You can do it, it's very quick, but I'm, I would rather do that in my M2 or some sort of gas engine car where I can hear the engine and shift the transmission. So for me personally, I would get an EV as appliance and, and, and I really like this. I mean, it is expensive at this specific model, but I would recommend something like the rear wheel drive one or maybe even the dual motor one. I was looking at their website recently. They basically have a no upcharge for the dual motor right now, which is pretty crazy. Uh, the single motor and dual motor were the same price at around $48,000. And I think when you're closer to that price range, you know, in the mid to upper 40s, this starts to make a lot more sense because you get most of the things that I enjoy about this from an electric car standpoint and things that I like compared to a Model 3 the better build quality. I like the looks a lot better. Um, I think the hatch is quite usable. You do get a slightly less usable frunk up front, but you still ultimately have the same amount or more of a just general sedan, right? So I, I think you get those benefits. You get a, a gauge cluster that you don't have to take your eyes off the road. Um, you get an excellent sound system. You get some nice materials in here. I, it starts to become a compelling package. The big thing is, you know, how well will these hold their value as EV technology changes a lot? That is yet to be seen. I mean, we've seen Tesla Model 3s come down greatly in value. We can mostly thank Hertz for that, for kind of flooding the market with Model 3s. And don't get me wrong, that is a, a fantastic product, but if you value a well-built vehicle, you will like this a lot more than a Model 3, just frankly. I mean, if you've ever spent a lot of time or owned a German vehicle, to go into a Model 3, it feels a little rickety at times, not well built for the money. This doesn't give you that feeling. While it's not German, uh, it at least has uh, a pedigree in Volvo of quality. So that's what I'll leave it at. I think I would personally get a long range, maybe rear wheel drive one, uh, just because it gets more range. You know, this gets about 250 miles of range, give or take, probably a lot less in, in the real world, especially here in Colorado where it's cold. Uh, the EPA rating on the long range rear wheel drive is 320. So, you know, for me, once again, I would be more into an appliance, but I can see the appeal. And I do think that Pulsar has a genuine competitor here to the Model 3. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate it very much. And if you did, consider hitting that like and subscribe button so you can be around for the next videos. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.